I'm just going to share a couple of stories, you know. Um, I remember when my parents celebrated their 40th year married. You know, that's looking more and more rare, you know, in this current generation, especially in our generation. I don't know how it is that my generation has dropped the ball so badly. You know, you talk with a lot of people and you hear about their marital problems and you are disappointed at how so many of us who call ourselves Christians, you know, and we speak the word and we scabash, how we have not been able to keep the faith and keep our word, the vows that we made, not just to our spouses, but to our God. Especially considering a passage like, um, is it Ecclesiastes chapter 5, who talks about God himself fighting you and destroying the work of your hands when you choose not to keep your vows. You know, so I don't know why some of us take it so casually. Uh, you know, because uh, what? Because the consequences are not immediate. We think we can handle it. We think we are smarter than God. We think the word of God does not count. It does not is not relevant in this more current day. Well, that's a bit of a digression. Let me get back to the point. Um, so I um, I spoke with my dad. I was standing in, in his compound, very large compound, looking at his very large house, looking at the jeep that he just bought. Yeah, he was pushing 70 at the time. And um, I told him, thank you, dad. Thank you for going through the suffering you know of being married staying married keeping your home so that people like myself your, your sons your daughters your children and even others around you who are watching so that they could live a better life so they can have better options make better choices you know achieve better things it's a new world you know and um, those experiences they the shape us. When I was going through a rough patch, a very rough patch, a few years earlier, I was still going through it at that time actually. Um, I remember I was in my 30s, he was in his, um, I, I remember that my dad was, I think probably in his 40s or early 50s when he started having those problems. I'd say 40s, when he started having those problems. And then I saw myself going through similar kind of problems, different but intense just as intense maybe even more intense you know and um, one of the things that encouraged me was knowing knowing that my dad has gone through something similar and if god had chosen to put me through something like that at a much younger age then it must be that what is coming out of it will be beautiful and it will be big what am I talking about here? I'm talking about the problems and challenges that we go through in life. I remember when I was seven, several years ago, and I was, I was opportune to be an official with the NYSC. So for some reason, they thought they needed to interview me, which well, I find interesting. So I was sitting on the stage with the interviewer, and they asked a very interesting question. They said, you know, what's your experience been like, you know, with the NYSC? Now, this was a time when a lot of people complained, a lot of people ran away, a lot of people, you know, were not happy with being posted, especially to the north and the living conditions they had to deal with. But for me, my story was actually quite different. I had enjoyed it. I had found favor with God. I had also found God, you know. I had grown in my relationship with him. I understood him better. Uh, you know, I, 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 so many things, wonderful things happened to me while I was serving. And I was very happy about it. I expressed this. I shared this with this gentleman, with this lady, actually. And uh, so I think she was surprised and the others on the... You know, at the event, we were surprised that I was saying so, mo so many wonderful things about NYSC. So they said, ah, would you like to repeat it? And I remember how I answered. I don't know. Well, I, I said, you know, the vision is for an appointed time. This vision has been fulfilled. It's time to move forward. And here is the interesting thing. 
You see, when we walk with God, we will go through rough times. The Bible tells us this a very, very challenging statement in Hebrews chapter 12. It says, Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Every. It says, If you despise the chastening of the Lord, you are a bastard, not a son. God is not playing with this thing. It's a promise that we will go through these rough times. It's a promise. I don't get it why so many of us are running away. If we know our God, what does the Bible say? Those who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. If indeed we know our God, if we have spent time in his presence, if you have heard his word and followed him, even though you are going through a rough patch, you will like Job be able to say the Lord hath given, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You will be able to say though he slay me, still I will trust him. You will be able to say, I know that my Redeemer liveth. These are statements made by Job when he was going through hell. What are the statements you are making as you are going through what you are going through right now? What? It's too much for me. I can't handle it. Paul and Silas were in prison. They had been beaten black and blue. They were bleeding. They were chained and they were going to be executed the following day. I know I would have been complaining, Baba, it's because of you I'm doing this thing, oh, fight for me, oh Lord, fight for me, oh Lord, resist to me, deal with those who are fighting with me, if, oh, return to sender, I know that's what I would have done, and I think I have been favored and graced to enjoy some, you know, some close relationship with him, so why would I have failed, because my gaze would have been on myself rather than on Jesus, Paul and Salah started to praise him. And as they were praising him, God did not come quietly. He came and shook the cage. And their fetters fell off. What do you do? What do you say when you are going through your rough time? Paul said, We glory in tribulations also. Because tribulation worketh and is it endurance or experience? Endurance worketh hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. Listen, we glory in tribulations also. When we go through hell, we are happy that we are going through it because we are children of our Father who ensures that we go through hell. In order. Say if, you say, if a, if a grain of wheat abided alone, it cannot bear fruit. I've forgotten how that thing was quoted. But if it die, then it bears fruit. The way to bearing fruit is to die. The way up is down. The way to access the best of God is to endure and appreciate the chastening of the Lord. God doesn't just give blessings for the sake of blessings. He does to some people. But the closer you get to him, the more he requires of you, the more he demands from you. However, whatever challenge you are going through today is the challenge for today, not the challenge for tomorrow. Okay? You don't have to go back to that vomit once you have overcome it. And that's my point. You know, I was speaking with um, my sister a few years ago. We were dri I was driving, she was in the car with me. It was her car. And I said, I appreciate God for the pain that I have gone through. I said, I cannot recommend that anybody else go through this pain. I just cannot. Because it's difficult. I'm, oh, it's difficult. But I appreciate God for the pain. And I will not take any of it back. However, I am not going back to that pain. I'm moving forward to the next chastening that the Lord wants to bring forth in my life. I'm moving forward to the next breakthrough that the Lord wants to bring forth in my life. Yes, I'm looking forward to the next chast chastening, next chastisement, next tribulation, the next challenge, the next problem. Because I know through these problems I am being built up and I'm growing. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying if you want to walk with the Lord, you take the next step. So yes, thanks, but no thanks. I'm not going back to yesterday's problems. I'm moving forward to tomorrow's challenges. We are not of them that draw back onto perdition, but we are of those that press forward to the saving of the soul. I'm challenging you. What is the way you are dealing 
with the challenges that you are dealing with today? Are you complaining or are you encouraged that God said in this world you will have tribulations but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Are you confident when the next challenge comes enough to be able to look at it and say the same God that saved me from the lion and the bear will take you down, you uncircumcised Philistine? How? What is your reaction? Do you rejoice in the Lord always despite the pain? And face that next challenge with boldness and confidence that the Lord God Almighty, who has never failed, is not about to start failing on your own case. No, thanks, but no thanks. I'm not going back to perdition. I'm not drawing back to the things that I have overcome already. I'm moving forward to the saving of the soul. I'm moving forward to a closer and better relationship with Him, a deeper knowledge of Him, that I may know Him and the fellowship of His sufferings. I hope that's your prayer as well. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Remember to share this video. Somebody needs to hear these words. Somebody needs to be encouraged in the pain that they are going through. Hey, click on like. Click on subscribe. Um, leave a comment. Ask a question. Insult, abuse, disagree. Whatever it is, you know, God can handle it. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.